Hey everyone, it's me again, Brittany, and I'm here today to do my November wrap-up. So, the month of November was a strange reading month for me. To be quite honest, I just, I just don't even know what I read. I, I just don't even really remember November. It went by so, so fast. I didn't feel like I got a lot of reading done. But to be quite fair, it really was because for the first 10 days of November, I was actually in Argentina and I didn't get that much reading done while I was traveling. I didn't get any reading done, really, while I was traveling. So I had a little bit of a late start to the month and the rest of the month just went by so quickly. I don't even remember remember most of it. It went like Argentina, something in the middle, Thanksgiving, and now we're in December. So <laughs> this wrap up might be a little bit of a hot mess, but hopefully because I read less, I'll actually be able to give you even better descriptions, you know? So for the month of November, I actually managed to read nine books. Uh, <laughs> to be fair, three of them were graphic novels. So, you know, a little bit of a few easier reads in there. So let's kind of just get started and tell you what it is that I read this month. The first book that I finished was Gideon the Ninth by Tamsin Muir. I gave this book four and a half, right? Yes. I gave this book four and a half out of five stars. I ended up enjoying it more than I thought I would in the beginning. I did have to actually restart this one. I started Gideon the Ninth at the very end of October because I had hoped to finish it for the Witchathon that Rhiannon was hosting and I just didn't get to it. I started it on audio and I started to realize even though I made it half Way through the audiobook that I hadn't really absorbed much of it. So I had to come to the difficult decision to start the audiobook over again. And I finished it actually the first day back from Argentina. So on like November 11th ish. And I enjoyed it a lot more than I thought I would. I still feel like I had some weird troubles absorbing the story. And I just think that the way that Tamsin Muir writes just might not be totally my thing. And that's probably why. But I still really enjoyed the story. I felt really attached to the characters. I I think that the story itself was so new and creative and different. It's basically a space drama with necromancy and lesbians. So that's really all I knew going into it. Actually, I knew less than that going into it. I had no idea that this was actually sci-fi. I thought it was just like necromancy, but it is sci-fi. It's set in the future potentially of our world. It's never really clarified. And there are necromancers and their assistants. And we follow Gideon who I will not explain her story because finding that out for yourself is half the fun. But all you really have to know is that she starts off as a prisoner. So that's kind of, that's all I'm gonna say because the less you know going into it, the better. But like I said, something about Tamsin Muir's writing just is weird. Uh, it just didn't flow very easily. It didn't absorb as well as I would have liked, but obviously I still gave it four and a half stars. So it, the story itself must have been incredible. I read a new favorite series this month. So that's awesome. Let's quickly talk about it. I was a little nervous going into it because you guys, when I talked about it in my TBR, mentioned that it wasn't your favorite of her works and well let me just let's just bring it up that way you know the archived by victoria schwab i read this and i loved it i have owned this and the unbound because i read them both this month but i've owned both of these books for years i have owned them since like 2014 and in 2014 they had i believe just gone out of print so these copies you can't really find anymore in stores you would have to probably thrift them from either like a local thrift store or through thriftbooks.com, which is I think how I originally had gotten my copies. So they went out of print. Victoria Schwab never released the last book in, I believe this was supposed to be a trilogy. So it ended up just being this kind of duology. And I kept putting off reading it, even though it had been so, so popular when I first picked it up. And after a certain amount of time, didn't want to pick it up anymore because it had been so long and I'd read so many of her newer works. And I just thought that this might not actually reach that level. And everyone absolutely adores her writing and her books. So I was a little nervous to go back in time and see what her first few books looked like. But in October, I actually read The Near Witch and it kind of motivated me to want to pick up The Archived. And I haven't really explained what The Archived is about, but basically The Archived is about our world. But in this world, there's also a place for the dead. And we're following Mackenzie, who is a keeper of these dead. And she has to live sort of a dual life of being just a regular teenage girl, but also in her downtime, in her free time, in any time she can possibly make for it, she has to go to The Archive and pretend 
protect her quarters and keep these histories asleep because if these histories ever wake up they're very confused and they're desperate to get out of the archive and back into the real world. So you can imagine it's kind of a dangerous job. Again, I was kind of nervous going into this one because I thought that maybe B. Schwab's writing wouldn't have been as good, that the story itself might not be as good, I haven't really heard anyone talk about it since they originally came out, but I absolutely adored it. I think that it was just such a fun, fun read, it was super fast-paced and interesting, and Mackenzie's story is very just dark and she's going through a lot and you get to kind of see her work through it and maybe meet a new friend because she isn't the best at making friends, but it also has an underlying mystery and it's such a cool mystery and I just didn't guess most of the twists and turns that happened in this and I just had a good time. It felt like old YA and I didn't realize how much I'd been missing that. So after I finished the archive, which I gave five stars, I picked up the sequel, which is The Unbound. I again was really nervous going into this one because I knew that it was a duology now, but it was originally meant to be more than just a duology. So I thought that it was going to leave me on a cliffhanger and that I wouldn't have a good time or that it wouldn't be as good as the first one, but I actually enjoyed this one just as much. The story definitely evolved in this one and we're following more of like the mystery that happened in the first novel, but it's just, it's <sighs> so good. It just, you can feel all the angst in it of being a teenager and Mackenzie having to be this secret keeper and keep this life away from her parents and somehow make it so that they don't find out. And she's going through even more in this one. She's just had a very big psychological time in the first book and her mental health isn't the best. And it's very, very interesting to watch her kind of grow from that. I noted a couple of my favorite lines in here. I did actually just have such a good time reading it. And it didn't end on too much of a cliffhanger. It actually didn't end at all on a cliffhanger. This felt like a good close to the story. I didn't feel like I needed more. I would like to have more, but I didn't feel like I needed more. So this was another five star. So the next book I picked up was actually The Picture of Dorian Gray by Oscar Wilde. I have such mixed feelings about this book. The Picture of Dorian Gray, I feel like most people know what it's about, but Dorian Gray is this absolutely stunning man. And through circumstances unknown to him, he somehow trades places with with a painting made of him and his painting ages while he stays the same forever. And again, I had very mixed feelings with this because I absolutely adored the beginning. I felt like it was such an interesting take on vanity and narcissism and how they viewed the world. I loved all the like philosophizing I feel like that went on. Is that how he's is that how you say it? Philosoph philosophizing. I think that's how you say it. Okay, I'm gonna say it like that. But I really enjoyed that part in the beginning. I was just having such a good time until like a little over the halfway point. There is a very clear turn in the story, not only just in the themes, but the mood and the vibes. It all around just completely changes at a certain point and I did not enjoy that change. I was kind of confused. I ended up listening to this on audio and in Initially, I really wanted to pick this up physically right after I finished it on audio, but after I listened to that part about halfway through, I didn't want to pick this up at all physically. I just didn't enjoy it. I was very confused. I didn't really get why the writing style had had to change so much. And then obviously Dorian just becomes a much less likable character. So that was pretty upsetting, but I did like how it ended. I mean, the thing is, is I feel like the ending did make up for it, but there's just that awful part, like, right? It was like about maybe this much of the book. The beginning, awesome. The ending, great. But the middle, I hate Hated it. So I personally probably would have given it like a two star, but I could respect what they were doing because the thing is, is it was awful on purpose in that middle part. It wasn't supposed to be a likable story at that point and I knew it. So instead I gave it four stars, but again, I just have mixed feelings. I really don't feel like I would want to pick this up physically, but maybe picking it up physically would also change my mind about that part. Maybe it's just not something that would absorb as well audibly. I'm not sure. <sighs> this next one I loved. So unsurprisingly, I gave another volume of Monstrous five stars. This one's volume three and it is just getting so freaking good. So, so good. The story is just evolving so much and I'm just so impressed by the world building and the character development. You just... 
so much is happening and normally I feel like you can't get that much in a graphic novel but this one is just giving me all of the fantasy amazing steampunk monster kind of feels. <laughs> I've talked a few times about what this is about but basically the gist of it is that we are following Micah Halfwolf and she has a monster living inside of her and this monster is just you know, he kind of is making her life miserable. But this world in general is kind of miserable. It is a very steampunk and beautifully made world, but it's at war with each other. We have the Arcanics and the regular humans just absolutely despising each other, and you have a lot of terrible things happening to the half-breeds of these people. And it's just a sad world, but Micah's story is so interesting. She is just a very cold, I don't give a fuck kind of character, and I can really appreciate that in her. And I just... I just really adore these. I just know that they're gonna keep getting better and the artwork is just so phenomenal. Like, like how incredible is that? It's just so stunning. I have such a good time with these. If you need a graphic novel, I've recommended those a few times, but I will keep recommending them, so. I read Defy Me. This one was bad. It was just bad. I listened to it on audio because this is another one where I accidentally waited too long to pick it up and then I just didn't want to pick it up anymore because I had been hearing so many mixed reviews about it. Not even mixed. I honestly had been hearing pretty bad reviews about it across the board and I was hoping that I would be different than all those reviews but I should have known better because the thing is is some very trusted reviewers gave this bad reviews and I didn't like it either. I gave this a 2.5 star. It might have deserved a little bit less. It might have deserved a 2 star. To be fair, it's just such a different story. I really loved the first three books in the Shatter Me trilogy. It was just so interesting. We're in this dystopian world that is absolutely failing and the people are doing whatever they can to survive. They're being ruled by an iron fist and there are people with powers rising out of nowhere from this toxic air. And we're specifically following Juliet whose touch can kill a person and she has no idea how to control it and it just really was such a fun trilogy and then Tahata Mafi decided to continue the series and I didn't mind the one right before this. I didn't. I thought it was kind of different but I liked it overall and then we got to Fai Me and I was like why? <laughs> it just feels like a fan fiction. Our main characters names aren't even the same as they were in the first part of the trilogy and the world is so weird. It just doesn't feel like this was the story that she had in mind when she started the trilogy. It feels like after she ended it, she was thinking about it and she was like, you know what? This would be pretty cool to do with the world. And at the end of the day, I was like, no, <laughs> stop, please. <laughs> so I just don't adore it. I think that the story has just taken a turn that I'm not fond of. I can't say that I adore the direction that it's going in. I feel like everything that happened in the previous book was kind of just like, thrown away in this one. I'm hoping that the last book, because I think there's only supposed to be one more in this reboot, will really tie things together and make me enjoy it again. But like, for now, it's not my cup of tea, and that's always really sad, because I absolutely adore to shatter me. It just feels like a completely different story. It doesn't even seem reminiscent of the, I mean it does, but like, it's just, it's too different. That's it. That's really all that I have to say about it. All right, let's talk about the biggest surprise for this month because no one is more surprised than me that I gave this book five stars. Queen of Air and Darkness by Cassandra Clare. I don't know, maybe I should have been listening to the Infernal Devices on audio the entire time. I feel like the audio experience was just a lot better for me, but I loved it. I really did. I will still say that my issues with the Infernal Devices in the first two books had mostly revolved around the fact that I didn't like the main couple in the story. I still don't like really the main couple in the story. I've just kind of decided to overlook that and kind of focus more on the side characters because their stories are so, so, so good. As far as Emma and Julian goes, I kind of can do without them, but I did just really enjoy seeing everyone else grow and seeing all the other kinds of relationships that were blooming and the ending of this was just so touching. A lot of the characters from the first 
first two series, The Mortal Instruments and The Infernal Device. Did I call this The Infernal Devices? I meant The Dark Artifices, but obviously The Infernal Devices and The Mortal Instruments, they actually made quite a few appearances in this book and I think that might have a little bit to do with why I liked it so much more than the previous two Dark Artifices books. But again, I think it's also mostly because Cassandra Clare decided to focus so much on the side characters, not so much on Emma and Julian. I really didn't care about them. There was one cool kind of part in the book that revolved only around them and I thought that was a really interesting take and it was very dark and grim and just so fascinating to see. But as far as the rest of their story, like their love story, I just don't care about it to be quite honest. Uh, I did enjoy the politics in this one. I'm really, really interested to see where the next series goes because I know it's going to be revolving around Ty, who is one of the twins, and I just think that it's going to be pretty cool. So I'm glad that I pushed through this one because I did not want to. I did not want to push through this at all. I had been so let down by Lord of Shadows, but this one really, it made up for it. So yeah, if you're having issues with these books because they are really slow, like they're big and slow, I understand the need for adding all that detail but at the end of the day it does make for a pretty boring story physically but listening to it on audio really helped for me at least so and the last two books that I read this month I read the tea dragon festival and dewdrop I'm so happy that I read these I gave them both five stars we'll talk a little bit more about dewdrop in a moment but the tea dragon festival was it was so so good I loved that I read this. I loved getting all the really happy feelings from being in this world. I love Katie O'Neill's writing. I like how she describes her characters. I love her drawings. I just really like the way that these books make me feel because at the end of it, you just feel so like happy and loved and ah, just good. And the story always holds such a nice message and I just can really appreciate that for these books. I will say I think I still like the Tea Dragon Society a little bit more, but I reread a little bit of the Tea Dragon Society with Adam because I actually had him read it in one of my vlogs this week, so check that out if you want to. And I will say that even though initially I thought that I liked the Tea Dragon Society more, when I was rereading that part with him, I kind of realized that I might need to do a reread because the Tea Dragon Festival actually might be a little bit better. So yeah, it was just, it was really great. I'm really happy that I read it. As for the last book in my November wrap up, I read Dewdrop, also by Katie O'Neill. This and Tea Dragon Festival were sent to me by the publishers who are Oni Press, and this is actually an arc of Dewdrop. It hasn't been released yet, but its release will be in April of 2020. This is a perfect children's story. I will say that if you're expecting more of a story like in the Tea Dragon books, you're not going to be entirely happy. Um, the reason that I gave this one five stars isn't necessarily because I thought it was like the best thing that I read this month, but again, I do think that this is great for who it's being made for. I do think that this is more centered around a younger audience. All of Katie O'Neill's books, in my opinion, of the ones that I've read so far, are good for kids, but this one's especially good for like little, little kids that want to be able to read on their own. This just was super fast paced and it was just really simple and it had more to do with the moral of the story than anything else. So I can appreciate this for children. I think that it's great for little kids. I just don't necessarily think it's amazing for an older audience like it's still worth reading because it's so freaking cute and all her artwork is just so adorable and it's just nice to have a happy little time but do I think that you're gonna get a ton out of it maybe not I again I still think it's worth giving it a shot and looking at it but if you are looking for something more like the tea dragon society this isn't gonna be exactly that uh, I haven't read yet aquacorn cove or anything like that but I do know that she has other like larger graphic novels that might be better suited for an older audience. Again, I still think that all of her books can really be read by kids, but that's, you know, my personal opinion. So yeah, those are all the books that I read this month. I had a very strange reading month because there was just so many like, you know, I had so many opinions that went against each other. There were so many different ratings and confusing ratings and confusing reads for the most part. But overall, I had a great time because I did read The Archived and The Unbound, which are probably one of my new favorite VE Schwab books and I did read Queen of Air and Darkness which was insanely impressive for me <laughs> and obviously Tea Dragon Festival was probably the highlight 
of my month. But overall, I'm, I mean, I'm glad that it's done. <laughs> I really am hoping a lot more of myself for December. I feel like it's just going to be the month where I buckle down and get the rest of my reading done and read some really amazing books that I've been looking forward to. I feel like lately I've just been kind of reading to read instead of reading because I'm really, really excited about something. And I definitely can already see that changing for December. So that's going to be amazing. It's just going to be a different feeling entirely. So yeah, let me know if you guys read any of these books this past year or in this month specifically and let me know even if you didn't what your favorite book of November was because I would love to know. I think my favorite book was The Archives. It was just like the most surprising one. It was the one I expected like so little out of and it just really lifted me up. So that's gonna be my favorite book of the month. Obviously it's kind of tied with a few of them but that's the one that we'll just talk about for now. So yeah, that's gonna be it for this video today guys. I love you so so much. Thank you so so much for watching and I will see you in my next one. Goodbye!